I will try to keep it short and simple. So the overall idea is um, how multimodals in the processing to health environmental monitoring. Um, in this case, our application is aquatic waves and uh, targeting in India. So what's the goal for this one to understand, um, to develop the technology or the tool sets using AI and computer vision uh, and image processing, signal processing together so that we can monitor um, uh, the growth of uh, some aquatic waves. So I'll come to that point, which is uh, what it has in which is one of the um, uh, most notorious uh, weight in the world. It looks very nice when it flowers, but practically it creates a quite tough problem across the world, especially in the tropical region. So the idea, how do you use satellite imagery in order to monitor them remotely? So this is just to give you some context to why uh, this is a such a big problem and uh, why we are interested to solve this problem by providing some tool sets. So in this particular work, what we are trying to develop the tool set, uh, which should help to understand the policy makers or somebody responsible can um, help them what action plan they could take. So what it has in is, as I said, it's a major problem across the tropical region and it impacts fisheries, drinking water sources, um, rice cultivation, navigation, recreational water bodies, and um, lots of things. And also uh, lakes are becoming breeding ground for uh, many diseases, especially the mosquitoes, and that goes to um, diseases that chikungunya and endangered human health. So I guess these are the, some of the photographs uh, captured all over the world where water transmit is a problem, um, starting from um, India, Africa, uh, USA, especially Florida area, and some parts of Europe as well, uh, particularly in Portugal. So the way we are trying to tackle this problem, it's a multimodal problem. Uh, we're trying to take it. Uh, we're using um, satellite imagery, uh, particularly Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 because they're free, but that comes with the problem. I'll tell about that later. We uh, had some drone missions, uh, particularly we wanted to have high resolution data um, that we can map back uh, in order to develop the models, develop the algorithms, and those are um, optical and multispectral. And whereas in the satellite, we took care of uh, synthetic aperture radar or SAR, and optical and spectral. And finally, the ground, uh, we also wanted to put IoT enabled sensors because we wanted to capture the water quality data. There is a direct relationship between the water quality and the growth and the growth cycle of water as And finally, we put them all together uh, to process it with uh, data fusion and um, some of the machine learning models. The ultimate aim is to create a high resolution map, interactive map, which people can use to see what is the growth in a certain targeted area. Just to give you a bit more context, this is one of the field visits that's in southern part of India, that's in Kerala. And we had some drone missions over there. Um, these are the, some of the pictures uh, we took. So we had a local drone company to fly over. And those are multispectral sensors on board on the drone payload. And these are the, some of the images. Just to give a little more, um, why this is a problem. Uh, just to give you uh, some idea, uh, this is one of the drone missions we, we had. Kerala is a beautiful place. It has got lots of backwater uh, uh, channels and this is very nice. Used to, these backwater channels people used to have for fishing purposes, 
or in transport purposes, traditionally over the years, over hundreds of years. But what happened with invasion of the water has in those channels are typically choked. And all the very large channels have been cleared and nobody has got that much of capacity to clear them out. So it is quite important to have them monitored and see what is happening and get back um, some of the ways to ensure the food security, particularly uh, for the fishing purposes and the tourism purposes. And this video I just wanted to show you because that shows the scale, that shows the scale of the problem and why do we need digital tools to uh, address those problems, to monitor them. This is another UN organization based in Hyderabad in India. They do uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, agricultural research. They're yeah, part of this project. What we did, we tried to run some controlled experiment because it's not always possible to have everything from the field and we can analyze. So we just wanted to understand the growth cycle of the water has in. So what we did, we put uh, level MRV sensors in there and trying to see um, what is the growth cycle by placing uh, water has in on this uh, on these ponds. And we have a very controlled way of uh, passing nutrients towards it. And that gives us some of the nice, uh, interesting result, which we can then compare with, because we also do a continuous picture as well as when we're getting the data. Right, now I'm moving on to some of the results we have obtained from this project. One of them is using the uh, Sentinel-1 uh, synthetic aperture radar data or the SAR data. What exactly we did is this is one of the lakes, <laughs> quite large lakes, and we took a SAR measurement from Sentinel-1 in November 2019 and 2022 January, and that time there was a, a dam over it, and in that area, we have seen clear uh, presence of water hyacinth, which was there in this, in this picture. That was the actual uh, picture with the mobile camera. And from satellite, we will be able to see that. Now, what we did measure is the backscattering of the synthetic aperture radar. And if you do the statistical analysis, you would be able to truly understand what is the distribution of those signals over the target area. And when you compare them, um, you can actually create a change detection map, which is clearly showing this is the area which has been impacted by what it has in. And typically what happened, this is a parametric statistical modeling we uh, put together. Uh, this is a mixture of washing cards where you can actually fit the cards. Uh, you can see if the clean water is there, you have a single nice one, single pick uh, uh, washing cart, whereas for the presence of water has in, you can already see a uh, single uh, double or multiple picks, uh, mixture of caution, uh, those kind of things. Now that leads us to finally create a detection mask, which is more usable uh, to somebody who likes to take some action of remedial actions. This is another site in Hyderabad. In this case, I'm going to show you how high resolution drone flights actually helped us to understand the growth. Uh, we have actually picked up a few sites as well where we actually took the water quality data that we can see, site one, two, three, four, five, and some of the pictures using citizen sense. We created one app so that people can take two images as well, so that for the uh, verification. Uh, that has been quite useful. Now, in this case, you can see we have taken, this is from Sentinel-2 data, and we have taken optical plus uh, infrared as well. So microspectral data for various different dates. <clears throat> and different color are representing uh, if there kind of there's something or not. Uh, typically, the top two has got what it has in place towards the uh, bank of the lake, the bottom two were not. And what we have actually figured out with the citizen science data 
to map these things. Now, one of the interesting question I think all of us we face is the data labeling. So it's quite great. We can have all the data from the satellites, all the historical data. But the data labeling is safer if you like to use any machine learning methods. What do you do? Either you stick together, create polygons with very laborious way, spend hours. There's another way you could do, which we uh, think is quite useful what we did. We take random samples from the target area and that random samples that we have grown using machine learning models, something called uh, random forest and which we have verified with the polygons that, that actually is giving quite nice results and that can partially solve the data learning problem. Once we have that, then we try to do segmentation using deep learning techniques. Um, there are multiple techniques we tried and also we combined uh, modification of some of these techniques and we finally produce segmentation map. Where the segmentation map, you can see the green area is the water hyacinth map, whereas the blue area is water and uh, other vegetations or land, this kind of stuff. So, Having seen that, those kind of uh, algorithms that is working fine, we've got very high resolution, but that's not the end of the story. <laughs> but you really like to see what are the challenges in these kind of approaches in the multimodality. And that challenge is not only for aquatic vegetation monitoring, it's, it's clear for everybody. Every uh, problem we try to solve using this uh, monitoring or uh, multimodal systems. One um, is the availability of the data. We have seen uh, European Space Agency's Sentinel data is free, but <coughs> there is low resolution. One pixel represents 20 square meter, 20 meter by 20 meter. Not large enough because if you are trying to see small water bodies or anything smaller than that, we'll miss it. You can probably get very high resolution data. Either you have to pay, uh, to planet or picture or maybe Airbus Lockheed Martin. But the other way, what we think we could actually use, what we are trying to achieve in this one and future work, by using the drone data, which is very high resolution, four to five centimeter resolution, and creating the model, which is called super resolution, having the low resolution satellite data and the high resolution drone data create the model so that the low resolution drone data from 20 meter by 20 meter, if we could actually bring that to the resolution of one meter, even five meter, is going to be substantially uh, useful for multiple different detections. So that's that's the kind of the goal from the computational side. I mean, my background is computer science, so I look from that side. But that's not the only problem, because that comes with the registration problem. When you're flying drone, you're passing the satellites, they're not exactly the same time. Fine, they're not exactly in the same location either. So how do you solve that problem? That's also a challenge. Finally, um, something we're working on called transfer learning. Because the optical data often problematic because rain, cloud, any environmental issues, or sometimes satellite passes in the night. So what do you do? And you can probably use in that case Sentinel-1 data, which is which can penetrate through cloud, which is fine in the night, but the SAR data is very much noisy. So use the SAR data to fill the gaps within the optical or the multiple spect multispectral data is one of the key questions. It is a challenging task, but it is something doable which we are trying to work on. The other problem is small object detection and the same classification from the remote data or the satellite data is a problem. So that is something we are trying to work on. And finally, this is the AGI because not all the high bandwidth data we want to transfer in our uh, large server that takes a whole lot of communication problems. Rather, can it do processing at the A's? And can you do all this intelligent AI, putting back that into the embedded device that can actually process it and send the data that is minimal and that is required to send? So these are the, some of the challenges we are trying to work on. 
and hopefully this is the challenge you are facing for working in this domain and with that i'm going to stop and happy to take any question Any questions for this one? Then? Okay. Any questions for the floor? Uh, gentlemen, there. Okay. Uh, I don't want to ask you ask um, why you do not have to do not use the walk. Sorry, could you please repeat it? I want, I want to ask why the Google's uh, factory is the knowledge change of the work like I know India has different signals and you can do this kind of work using one signal. So I believe in the factory, you know, the variations in the different signals that need to know makes yeah. sense for you to compare. So that was common on seasonality, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's that's absolutely correct. So we take care of the uh, weather data, the rain, and the temperature as well. And we are also started looking at uh, data from African countries, so that it has got the right variation. And what we are more keen on understanding this these tools and algorithms is transferable for various um, geographical locations. But yes, that is quite important to include the seasonal information within that. Thank you. So, Dina, um, second question for Steve. Um, have you considered the jets and nano, nano tool for your edge processing? Yes, <laughs> indeed. So I work on multiple different edge processing device. Um, one is uh, Jetson Nano, yes, Raspberry Pi, but also um, uh, we have created something, a heterogeneous system which has called uh, Jetson Nano. We have one carrier board where we put um, very small FPGA, built programmable gate array. I don't know how many of you are uh, familiar with that. So there are kind of three or four types of computer architectures or the processor architectures. One is the CPU, most computer use, and um, say Raspberry Pi uses. GPU will run lots of large machine learning models. The Jetson Nano from NVIDIA, they have got that. And the another is called field programmable gateway. Basically, you can design your processor, and that is very much uh, energy efficient. You can do stream processing, but all of these different types of computer architecture are good for certain purposes. So, what we are trying to see large algorithms like CNN, how do you partition them into different types of architecture to get best of all, to give you very fast response time but the energy consumption is minimal. Okay, there's another question for Anna uh, Angus Smith. Um, Deepan, might the new NERC EO Data Hub offer an opportunity to address challenges around EO data availability? What else might be needed? So this is about the uh, information architecture for Earth observation images. Um, you mean in terms of the infrastructure or in terms of the, how the data should be uh, curated? Uh, I'm guessing both. Yeah, okay. okay. So the infrastructure, um, there has been lots of uh, advancements has happened from uh, European space agencies and the data uplifting has been quite incredible. But still what we felt is uh, understanding that data, processing that to such an understanding, everybody can understand who are the domain expert. That gap is still exist. That is what we're trying to do here. So after processing what we're trying to have interactive, say Google Maps style thing, where you can just put the, your location and that will try to show this is a, another uh, semi-transparent layer of what it has in at different growth states. So uh, taking from raw data into a usable uh, visualization is quite important. But in terms of the other data, what we have curated, and uh, one of the things we are trying to do, haven't done that properly yet, is the metadata information because all the drone flights we have collected the proper metadata information is so important even though if you want to do any processing with it and those are the things often missing 